Another thing that's been really interesting to observe is how the two political parties in the UK, the two largest ones, have been reacting to this conflict, right? So we've had Sukhya Starmer going around doing interviews. Most notably, he did one on LBC where he defended, it seems like he defended uh, Israel's right to control water and electricity to, uh, in the Gaza mm -hmm. um, to basically try and control Hamas. Um, people had a problem with that because they thought essentially he was advocating a break of, of international law um, mm -hmm. and, the, and the laws of war and things like that. And he's got a lot of stick from the Muslim community as well about all of that, and we'll get into that in a minute. And of course, you have Rishi Sunak, who, as the elected prime minister, has been making the UK's perspective known worldwide that he, we stand with Israel, we support Israel. He's actually went to Israel to visit. Um, and some people are criticizing him as well and saying you're getting very close to a group that, you know, we're not sure if they bombed the mosque or not. We're not sure if, if they're acting uh, uh, in, you know, in the international sort of interest or they're breaking and committing war crimes. There's been that sort of conversation as well. So what are your thoughts and leadership in, in the political parties around these com this conflict so far? I think it's dangerous to get too close to either side, to yeah. be honest. Um, uh, it's important to note that Israeli politics has moved really far right recently like they've they've just tried to you know abolish their supreme court essentially or abolish its powers which doesn't really strike me as something the uk would want to be trying to get itself closer to um equally you don't want to be too close to a hamas um and to be honest i think that it's la the uk should try and largely remain neutral on this as far as it can um I appreciate the, the the natural tendency to go, oh, there's been a terror attack in, in mm -hmm. this country and this horrible thing's happened. British uh, lives have been involved as well. That's that's the other thing is that you can't really stay neutral when there's British citizens on the ground who have been um, killed uh, or other things have happened to them. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily something that we we as a country, as a, I don't think our government institution should be involving themselves in this particular conflict. I mean, I, I slightly, I, I see where you're coming from. I disagree on one thing, which is, I think it's pretty impossible to remain neutral on the Hamas question. And I right, think okay. quite irresponsible for the UK to say, well, to do that false equivalence of it's just two groups fighting. And it's like, well, one's a murderous terrorist organization committed mm. to the eradication of the other and one you can say has more power and has been acting aggressively and ought to show restraint but i wouldn't call is the, the you know israeli government a terrorist organization committed to wiping out palestinians because they could yeah. have done that if they wanted to over the last few years and they haven't done that i don't think it's in their interest to do that no i, t I take your point and and also uh, definitely like you shouldn't condone Hamas like that's sure. de that's definitely not what I'm saying I, what I'm saying is is that in terms of the I, I I wonder if our politicians are overly involving with themselves and overly siding with Israel for example so for I think I can't remember what Rishi said word for word but I think it was something along the lines of we're with you all the way or something yeah, like yeah. that that was kind of off frame that's like all the way where yeah that's the problem is that you you've started to say we're with you sort of 100 percent, no matter what come hell or high water etc etc now that could end with essentially genocide <laughs> to, with without being you know too, i agree i totally agree too over the top do you think it. do you think that um in my personal opinion i agree with what you, what you both have said i do think that however it's not it, it, it can be double-edged sword it can be either good or bad it can be bad because if you're really close to the state, then it means that you're not really holding them accountable for their actions. But on the other hand, it could mean that because you have a close relationship with the state, because of that closeness, you can hold them more accountable. Where publicly, publicly you can say to is say to about Israel, you know, we stand with you and everything and X, Y, Z. But behind closed doors in private meeting, you say to Israeli politicians, don't do certain things because yeah. you know it could end up like you said in genocide or other kind of. Um, unfortunate crimes and stuff. So it depends which way. And and we've you know. we've we've actually seen that happen with President Biden, who, for 
All the jokes made about his age really shown some leadership in actually personally going to a very, very, very sort of hot area and not doing a Zoom call sort of in, you know, from the safety of the, of the White House. And his intervention, albeit you know, thwarted to, to some degree by the bombing we saw in the mosque, has led to some good. There are now humanitarian corridors open up in Gaza. Um, Israel is allegedly showing restraint or at least saying they're going to show restraint as they prepare for a ground invasion. Um, and so, but that, that, that I, I suppose, is off the back of the US making it very clear their unequivocal support for Israel. So maybe there is something about mm. kind of being, say, you know, we're united in your grief, uh, as some of the words President Biden used, used, that gives you a bit more sort of, I, I suppose, influence, influence I, in that area. I, I think we've got to be careful when we start drawing equivalents between the UK and the US on this, because Israel is one of the biggest recipients of US aid in the world. I think they're number four or five uh, since the year 2000. Like yeah. they, and that's only topped by like, Afghanistan, Syria, like you know, Somalia, mm -hmm. you are you are it, it when you have that much influence, whether it be aid or political or economic influence over a country, you can afford to make you know these changes. We do not have the influence over the country, it or we don't have anywhere near the same amount of influence over the over Israel, like not by a, mm -hmm. not by a stretch. Um, and to be honest, I think that if if you're if we do have that influence, then yes, we should use it. But the UK soft power has been reduced as of the last five six years, and right, we right, don't right. really have the same kind of ability to pull strings within the EU. We don't have the same kind of ability to pull strings within. I mean, the UK has a ability on the Security Council, which is relevant, but that's about it. In which case, we should be saying to Israel, well, show well, restraint. Well, Etc, we, etc. we sort of have historic um, influence in that we, we, we started this whole mess in the first place. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I Don't get me wrong. I, yeah, 100%. Take it on the chin. Britain, Britain fucked up once yeah, again, yeah, yeah. Uh, leaving a country <laughs> in complete yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, disarray. But, 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 what, but should we move on to Keir Starmer? Because he, he's had an interesting journey yeah. as well. So he had this car crash interview where he seemingly okayed Israel controlling water and electricity which is a war crime which is a war crime and then later on he sort of was in the, in the mosque kind of shaking hands with muslim leaders saying i'm now calling for the release of hostages and and you know muslims don't uh, hamas doesn't represent muslims and there's this there's been this sort of this, this attempt i suppose by him to change the script a bit i mean what do you what do you make of his leadership generally and and does he seem like a prime minister in waiting you know which, generally speaking he's always struck me the kind of guy that wants to please everybody Mm. that's just the way I've it, things like for example outside of this conflict we've had issues with him where he's speaking about um, the LGBT stuff what is a woman and you ask him in one, in one point in time you're saying a woman is someone that you can identify as a couple of years later he comes out after a huge backlash comes out and says a woman is an adult human female in fact there's a video online on LBC he did where I think it was Nick Ferraro that interviewed him and put it on him and said to him what is a woman and he wouldn't answer, he would just give you some vague answers. But now mm. he seems to be more um more firm in his beliefs. But so it's like he has a conflict he has a um a conflict of interest. He's trying to please everybody, depending mm. upon where people's minds are going and I don't know. Well, I mean, his he's he's grey, right? He's he's a, he's grey and quite so great, 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 great. great. I'm joking, I'm joking. Oh right, <laughs> sorry. I thought you genuinely misheard. No, 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 no. Hang just on, hang on. Just play. I wanted to put my line in the sand there. <laughs> uh, no, he's he's you know he he's here to win an election. Like let's let's look at it like that. He's here to win an election. Uh, there's a good chance he wins the election. It's by the sounds of things, it's his to lose. Yeah. And I say by the sounds of things because I've you know I'm not a pollster. I'm not looking at the data. Well, I look at the data. There's Unless he's killed someone years ago and and, the per and it comes out in the news, he should absolutely win. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, his his approval scores are way higher. But yeah, like, it's just ridiculous. It's it, it it he should he should win it, but the problem is is that currently there's still a year to at least a year yeah. to go. Well, under a year, but there's about a, a, year, year, a year to go <laughs> before that next election, that next general, and. There is so much that could happen between now and then. They still haven't really 
fully brought out their manifesto. They're, they're sort of holding back exactly what they're going to do. They're talking to business leaders. Uh, so I, I've got a, a friend who um, he went to uh, the Labour Party conference this year. Mm. He said it was the most he'd seen big business at a Labour Party conference since he'd been going. Oh, it's well. been like four or five years. So like there were major, major financial services firms there. Um, because they all see Labour as the party that's going to be coming in, um, and there's a good chance that they do. I mean, I think the Conservative yeah, no. Party has just broken the trust of the country over the past, like, well, 13 years, I suppose. Yeah. And there seems very little means of getting back in, and given the reputation that they've built for themselves, actually, particularly in the last two or three years, mm. there is very little that they can do to repair that. I mean, they lost the area it's called Tamworth in mid Bedfordshire, and apparently they've held those they've held those seats since 1931, mm -hmm. and we got yes and the to the general election, so it's not not looking good, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the reason why Keir Starmer is very kind of coy about this is because, as you said, there was no incentive for him to be bold and yeah. and split people because the the hate he might get from not being clear enough is not the same kind of hate he, he would get if he sided squarely with one side. And so when you're waiting to win an election, you just have to, you know, you just, you, it's, it's better you take the criticism you know you're going to get than, risk more. Than, you know, it, what they say, risk the, the yeah. enemy you know than the one you don't know. It is, his target audience is the silent majority. This is and it. frankly, like... And they're all silent on this as well. They're just trying not to say the wrong thing and, yeah. and get caught out by work or anything like that. So the, the overwhelming driver, I, I think the overwhelming driver of the next election is people are just sick of the fucking Tories. Yeah. That's it. For sure. Like, and, and, and so if he can get out of the way, then he'll win. And it's a shame because, of course, people want their political leaders to sort of be leaders and say the right things and stand up and do a kind of Corbyn. And people, I've been seeing people celebrating Corbyn and saying, well, look at this man. He's at the Palestinian rally. He's given all these amazing speeches. And I was like, and he also will never be prime minister. Now, that's not an insult. That's just to say that that's why he has the freedom to do those things and to, as he said, win the argument, as it were. Mm. But if it's office you're interested in, is it, if it's political office, then is that pragmatic play, unfortunately, by Keir Starmer, that will probably lead him to yeah. become our next prime minister. Mm -hmm.